Thank you, Pierre. Well, thank you very much. It's a great honor to be the first speaker of this workshop. So um, it's going to be a three lecture mini course on pseudo differential operators. Uh, I'll do the first two lectures in the morning and Andrej will continue this afternoon. So my plan is the following. Uh, first, of all, well, um, first of all, instead of writing pseudo differential operators and do the tongue twister all the time, I'm going to write PsiDO as, oh, PsiDO as, as a tradition. Now my plan is the following. So my first part is going to be on pseudo differential operators on uh, on Rn, which will con which will uh, consist of uh, several parts. The first part is quantization, which is the, and a related uh, concept is symbols and principal symbols. And then uh, I'll talk about two important operations, which is adjoints and uh, composition. Then I'll mention some mapping properties of pseudo differential operators on Rn. And then as parallel, um, I'm going to introduce a second type of uh, pseudo differential operators, which is scattering calculus on Rn, which will be useful later on calculus on Rn. And uh, then as an application, in the end, I'm going to uh, talk about elliptic parametric construction. At least give you some idea that why pseudo differential operators are useful. So all the theory today will be very classical. And uh, um, I'll try to um, be slow in the beginning. But feel free to stop me if you think um, there is anything else that needs explanation, or if you cannot read anything, or if you find any mistakes in my lecture. Uh, so, first of all, the first part of uh, the lectures will be, well, most of the part of the lecture will be following uh, Richard Merrill's old notes on pseudo differential operators. And this is a link. So, um, the most important link of this lecture is this. Uh, so, I'll just uh, leave it here for now. All right, let me start. I'll start with part zero, which is a very basic example to show you where pseudo differential operators appear. Mm -hmm. This is not a very good chalk. OK, great. So I'm going to start with operator P, which is Laplacian plus 1. And it's just a Laplacian Rn, which means that uh, if I take x1 up to xn as my uh, coordinates, then this Laplacian is just written as minus sum of dxj squared j from 1 to n. OK, so that's my operator. And uh, um, it's going to be, first of all, acting on Schwartz functions, which I'm going to use as curly s. So that's Schwartz functions. Since it's the first lecture, I decide to well, write down the, uh, remind you what are Schwartz functions. So recall. Well, Schwartz functions are those functions such that uh, uh, for any alpha, beta, multi-index, the supremum of x alpha d beta u on Rn is bounded. OK, so those are very nice functions. And uh, um, well, it's a Frazier space, has seminomes. And, and also, well, there's a, the dual space is a temperate distribution, which I'll just use sometimes. So dual space is S prime. OK, so that's uh, just some re um, while recalling some basic definitions. All right, so while this, Schwartz uh, this uh, Laplacian plus 1 certainly acts on Schwartz functions, and it's inverse. I'm denoting by Q, it's P inverse, well, it acts on Schwartz functions to Schwartz functions. And it can be written as following. So Q acting on function U, and I take the Fourier transform, take the Fourier variable psi, then this is given by 1 over 1 plus psi square U hat. OK, well, let me also write psi here. All right, so well, this is a, uh, you can easily see that by using the Fourier transform, and I'm going to do a, 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 a version just uh, in a few minutes. Okay, now this operator 
is a pseudo differential operator. That's a prime type. And uh, um, well, moreover, so this is a very classical one, and you can say that, okay, I can just apply it for your transform, and that's it. Now, of course, we want to do something else sometimes, especially say, if you're on a manifold or uh, you have some uh, complicated material of, this, uh, of the space you want to work on, then sometimes we have variable curvature operators, oh, sorry, variable coefficient operators. So for example, I can write p equals to minus sum of p, j, k. j and k are from 1 to n, act depending on x, temporal for now, dx, j, dx, k, okay. where p, j, k is an, a matrix. So for example, well, if p, j, k is just identity matrix, then I go back to the Laplacian I have there. But in a lot of times, we do have this. Okay. Now, the question is, what is p inverse, for example? And in general, if, well, if PJK has some good properties, then we know that PJ, P, P inverse is a pseudo differential operator, which we'll see in the end. All right, so basically that's the goal of my two lectures. All right, now, well, let me start by formally setting up things. Okay, any questions so far? All right, great. Okay. So the first part is, I'm going to start with the things we know and then gradually go into things of this, talk, of, of this lecture. So from differential operators to pseudo differential operators. Okay. So, well, the first, uh, uh, so the first object, I'm going to let A be a regular differential operator. So that's going to be um, sum of A alpha x d x alpha, where alpha is a multi-index. Now, let me again um, recall some basic notation here. So here alpha is a multi-index, meaning that uh, it's really a vector given by alpha 1 up to alpha n. And uh, when I say this d x alpha, what I really mean here is d x dx1 alpha 1, dx2 alpha 2, and da da da, dxn alpha, uh, right, dxn alpha n. And uh, here, another piece of convention here, dxj, in my case, it's not d by dxj, it's 1 over i d by dxj. Okay, so that's going to be convenient. And uh, um, also, the notation, this uh, absolute value of alpha, that's just the sum of alpha j, j from 1 to n. All right. Okay, so that's my notation. So, well, this operator A is really a regular differential operator where it has a coefficient that depends on x. Okay, now, while well, we can use, uh, okay, let me use a different board. And I should make sure I don't push it too high. Okay. Um, we're going to use Fourier inversion formula to write this action. That is, suppose I take a good function, Schwartz, in, in a Schwartz function, and uh, then we can write ux to be equal to 2 pi to the minus n, integration of e to the ix dot psi u hat psi d psi, integration rn. Okay. Right. okay, this is hat is, it's a bit weird, okay, this hat. All right, so, well, this is just the regular for your inversion formula. You can, you can do it in a more general class, but for now, let me just uh, restrict myself to Schwartz class. And, uh, well, if we think about the, well, the first thing you learn in, in Fourier transform is that uh, the differential will transform to the uh, multiplication on the other side. So dx alpha will go to the other side as 2 pi to the minus n, rn. At some point, I should uh, omit the rn, omit the rn, uh, and e to the i x dot psi, uh, psi alpha u hat psi d psi. 
So well, so that's a, that's a basic uh, formula. And again, here uh, alpha is multi-index. So when I say cosine alpha, it really means cosine one to the alpha one times cosine two times alpha, to the alpha two, and blah blah blah. Okay. And well, of course, if you look at combining this coefficient with uh, in, in the a, what we see here is the following: that a acting on u x, this is given by two pi to the minus n integration e to the i x dot psi. Um, okay, well, small a x psi u hat psi d psi, where this a x psi is a polynomial, and it's given by a alpha x, and uh, just replace the x alpha by this psi alpha here. Alpha less than or equal to n. All right. So well, that's nothing. That's just uh, just using uh, just using this uh, transformation between uh, multiplication and uh, differentiation. We arrive to this, and uh, later we'll see that uh, this is called a symbol. And uh, let me also introduce another piece of notation, which is so we say in this case. Um, a is equal to the quantization of A, and I'm going to use op zero A. Okay, so this is a uh, this is a notation that's not so conventional, but uh, I, will, I will use it here in the sense that uh, so op A just means that uh, we have the symbol, then then it transforms to a, to an operator, and op zero here means that uh, uh, this is a symbol that doesn't have y dependence there, which we'll see later. So just uh, for convenience. All right, so this is the first piece. Um, just, uh, it's really just some notation. Now I'm going to generalize it. So I'm going to generalize this a x psi to a more general class of functions. So as we can see that if it's a differential operator, then this a x psi here just appears. It just, it's just here. It's a polynomial. But later you'll see that it's um, it's well it's useful to generalize to a high, uh, to a more general class of functions where it looks like it has a polynomial decay or polynomial growth, but it has it's not just a polynomial. So this is I'm going to generalize it to uh, uh, from polynomial to a symbol class. And uh, for most of my lectures today, it's going to be called Nuremberg chain symbol class. And I didn't leave enough space there. Called Nuremberg symbol class. All right, now, well, let me first uh, introduce the definition. So the definition is uh, AX to psi, as this function that uh, will appear a lot. It's a, first of all, it's a C infinity function. And uh, it's on Rp cross Rn. I'll explain this to uh, two numbers in a moment. It's called a symbol class Sm uh, Rp Rn if the following is true. If for any multi index, alpha and beta, we have the following. So that's the most important uh, piece of information in this definition. So partial z alpha partial uh, psi to the beta a x psi. This is bounded by some constant that depends on alpha and beta times psi to the m minus beta. Uh, oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, AZ. <laughs> right, okay. And also, well, recall that uh, here there's another piece of notation that's going to be used a lot. So this is the Japanese bracket. This is defined to be the square root of one plus psi square. And uh, well, the property of that is that, uh, first of all, it's, it's like psi in the, at infinity. Meaning that uh, if you let psi go to infinity, then the growth is exactly like psi. And uh, the second thing, uh, the whole thing that why we're doing this is that this is smooth at zero. OK. 
bracket. So this is a Japanese gra bracket that I'm going to use a lot. OK, so that's the definition. Now, uh, before I move on to talk about uh, the implication, let me first say that uh, here I purposefully use P and N as two different notation, uh, two, two different numbers. Uh, for the most uh, talk, uh, most of the first lecture, P and N will, will, are going to be the same. Uh, but later, uh, we'll see that I'm going to introduce X, Y, Xi there, which will make, uh, which will make this P to be two N. Okay, so that's why I put it here. All right. Now let me say a little bit. Um, about the implication of this. Okay. So the first implication is that, uh, well, I know that A is going to be bounded by this form. Basically saying that uh, at infinity, A is basically like a polynomial of gross M, where M is the order that appears there. Right? That just, you just put uh, alpha and beta equal to 0, you'll see that. And uh, um, the second thing is that uh, um, the differentiation well, what it says is that uh, differentiation in z variable doesn't change the gross, so it does nothing. While differentiation in the psi variable would make it make it decay uh, one more by one power, so change decay by one power by one power. So if it's your first time to see this, you might feel uh, it's, a, it's a bit weird uh, definition. But one thing to always keep in mind is that our prototype is this differential operator here. And well, what's, what's the order here? The order here just tells me how many differentiation I have uh, to the original function. So the order here really just tells me how much differentiation I'll do. And uh, you can see that the M, when m is bigger, that means I'll have more differentiation. In some sense, it's worse. And you'll see that in terms of um, convergence and stuff, that, that, that is worse. And uh, so what it says here is that differentiation to z doesn't change it, while differentiation in the C variable is going to make it better. Okay, so that's, and uh, also uh, uh, the, um, for a more general class, there will be more parameters there in terms of how much decay you get. But for now, I'm just going to use the most classical one here. All right, now uh, the, Next thing I want to say is that uh, if we compare to this differentia uh, the differential uh, operator that I did before, one thing we can see here is that uh, for a polynomial form, a polynomial sum a alpha to the alpha, alpha less than equal to m. So this is in symbol class S m r n r n. If if I control the, well, okay, I should put x here. If I control the coefficient. So in the previous case, my, I'm assuming that my polynomial has a smooth coefficient. But I can make it slightly worse. If I assume, I only need to assuming that uh, the derivatives hit on, hitting on those coefficients don't do much. Okay, so if I assume that uh, um, dx beta applying to any a alpha is in L infinity, then I'm okay. So again, in particular, if this is, this is a smooth coefficient operator, then I'm certainly fine. OK. Then uh, the last thing I want to mention is this uh, example 0. So for example, OK, I shouldn't push it too much. Um, I'll just do this. So for the example 0, recall that uh, um, here, my, while my q is equal to p inverse, that's uh, by definition, this is Laplacian plus 1 to the inverse. So that's going to be the first the non uh, polynomial type, non differential operator type um, pseudo differential operator. Again, what you see is that we apply this Fourier inversion formula. You'll see that if I plug in this one over one plus cosine squared, then I invert it because the, the Laplacian plus one is doing is multiplying by one plus cosine squared. Okay, so this is equal to op zero one over one plus cosine squared. All right, by my definition. And uh, well, one thing we can see here is that, well, so this is a, let me call it op 0a, where a is equal to the thing in the bracket. And uh, another way to write it is just the, the Japanese bracket of c to the minus 2. All right, so in particular, this is a prototype of a, of a um, well, a minus, s minus 2, rn. 
where it doesn't have x dependence, but do we know that? Well, it, it's doable. OK, so this is, a, this is the first example I want to talk about here. All right. Uh, OK, so now I, um, so that's the basic definition. Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, the symbol A to be, you mean this one, this original symbol? Uh, no, you need to you need to have the global bound. You need to have that in order to have the convergence for for it to act on, for it to act on reasonable functions. You need to have this global bound there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me now um, generalize a bit more. As I said earlier, that uh, um, this. P and N, uh, okay, let me push this up a little bit. Okay, so this P and N doesn't need to be the same, and there's a reason that I don't want it to be the same for some, some, for some time. Okay, but before I do that, um, so okay, we're going to generalize more. So, uh, well, first of all, recall that uh, well, this U hat C, by definition, it's uh, just given by the Fourier transform. So it's e to the minus i y dot psi uh, U y dy. Okay, and uh, I'm going to put this into my definition of this uh, uh, of this quantization, and uh, so I can write it as up a acting on u, which will give me a function on x variable. And this is given by 2 pi to the minus n integration of e to the i, uh, well, i x minus y dot psi a x psi uh, u y dy d psi. OK. So again, this is doing nothing. Again, first of all, I'm still assuming this U is in the Schwartz class. So this is doing nothing in the sense that I'm just uh, writing this U hat as uh, in this form. And uh, well, there's a minus here. That's why you combine the two, you'll get e to the i times x minus y dot cosine. OK, so that's nothing. And, but I want to generalize more in the sense that I'm going to put in extra variable here. So the symbol can also depend on y. And uh, there is a reason that later we'll use that. All right. So well, again, everything just the same. That uh, so here, if I'm assuming that a x y psi, where x y are in this uh, the z variable in this R P space, then everything goes through. It's still I call it quantization of a, where there's no zero here. So that's uh, just thing, just to uh, to be different from this um, so-called left quantization. All right. Now, um, right. Let me just uh, write it. A is as say in this class. R2n, Rn. OK. And for now, well, originally I'm saying that u is in the Schwartz class. But even if u is in the Schwartz class, this convergence is still a problem. If you start thinking about, can I make sense of the integral here? This integral doesn't always converge, because I have a lot of things that's really bad. And uh, in fact, for convergence, well, first of all, if m is less than minus n, where m is this variable here, then I do get convergence. I get that of a acting on a Schwartz function is going to get me a bounded function in the sense that it converges for any x. All right. And uh, well, the reason is that uh, if m is less than equal, is less than minus n, then this is this whole thing is bounded by psi to the minus n. I mean, smaller than that, and that will help me to, to deal with the decay. It will help me to, to deal with the convergence of this psi here. All right, and of course, well, we we don't always have my, m minus less than uh, m, m less than minus n, and in fact, a lot of times it doesn't. So we'll have to do something about those bigger m. So that's my next topic. 
Uh, but before I do that, I should mention one thing is that uh, this operation, you can view it in a fancy term. It's called, uh, well, it's a, it's a bilinear, uh, it's a continuous bilinear map in the sense that uh, the norm is bounded by the semi-norms here as, as an operator and uh, blah, 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 which will be useful later. Okay, now let me talk about convergence. So that's part two. Okay, so convergence of quantization formula for general M. Now you'll see that uh, it really is about integration by parts. So, well, I'm going to rewrite it. So op A acting on U, well, this is given by the following. It's 2 pi to the minus n. So um, unfortunately, I'll have to copy the formula again. This is e to the i x times minus y dot psi. And I'll leave some space in the middle. A x y psi u y dy d psi. And what I'll do is I'm going to insert, two, insert things in the middle, which is psi square and psi minus 2. Okay. So this is doing nothing. And then I'm going to separate it into two parts here and do something for the first part. So well, for the first part, this is 2 pi to the minus n. Um, well, another way to write it is equal to 1 minus psi dot dy applying to e to the i x minus y dot psi. And uh, I'll copy the second half, which is psi to the minus 2, a x y psi dy d psi. Okay, so let me mark it out so that you know which part I changed. Okay, so you can, you can check that. That uh, well, this is a this is a pointwise formula, and uh, you can just uh, check that uh, this is where I, I'll generate this psi square. All right, and the next step is that I'm going to do integration by parts. So I'm going to do integration by parts in y variable. So I'm going to flip this uh, operator, this psi dot dy, to the other half. And right, oh, I should also mention that uh, whenever I, say, I, I, I put an um, this inner product here, that means that uh, it's uh, in the usual inner product sense that psi i times dy, psi one times dy one plus psi two times dy two and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, so I do integration by part and I flip it to the other side. And uh, this is going to give me, let me first write out the formula as formally. This is uh, e to the i x minus y dot psi times uh, 1 plus psi dy uh, psi minus 2 a x y psi dy dx. Okay, so what happened is that, uh, well, I'm just a, so first of all, this one just uh, goes through, and the second one, this uh, minus psi dy flipped to the other side becomes plus for psi dy. Here, well, I'm assuming that I can do this operation. And uh, so here I'm assuming that A is in symbol class SM, and uh, this M is less than minus M. Okay, for now. All right, so everything is legitimate that I can do it. Okay, now, now immediately we see that things get better. Yeah, I can throw this out. So, well, why does it, why is it getting better? So um, let me mark this half to the depth like that. So this is my star part. So if we look at the star part, you'll see that the star part is bounded by psi to the, okay, this is getting worse again, to the uh, m minus one times y to the minus n minus one. So what's happening here is that, uh, well, I differentiate in y, this does nothing. And, uh, well, this does nothing in terms of the, the decaying psi. And uh, I have a minus two here and I have a one here. 
So this becomes a lesson, minus one. Yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's really bad. Uh, UI here, and there's a UI here. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, great. So, right, and my star should include this U as well. Yeah. Okay, so for this, as I said, that uh, because of the decay, because I have two things here, and you'll see that originally this A is psi to the M order, and then I got one less. Okay. And in particular, what this is saying is that uh, now this last line here, it converges for M less than 1 minus N. Okay, because well, if m is less than one minus n, then this is less than minus n, and then it got converge, convergence. Okay, so this got one order better. After this integration by parts formula. All right. So, what this is telling us is that uh, if we can keep doing this integration by parts, and uh, then we'll just keep doing better and better. And in fact, so well, if we keep doing integration by parts of this operation, what we get uh, okay, to get the following, that uh, if A is a simple class in, of M's order, R, 2N, Rn, for any M, okay, this is really getting worse. Let me change the chalk. Then what I have is that no matter what n I have, I always have this uh, nice mapping. Uh, this is not better. Oh, A. Okay. This op A, this quantization of A, this operator, can actually map from Schwartz class to L infinity. Okay. So what I mean here is that uh, no matter what A I I put in in the beginning, uh, then I can always do this integration by part by saying that in the end, it acts on you. What I get is this thing that converges in the end. And that's my operation, and this operation will converge as long as you're putting a Schwartz function. I'll get a bounded, I'll get a bounded function out. All right, so that's uh, the first step. And there's some subtlety here in the sense that you might want to say, okay, so I keep integration by part in the sense that the first thing is not convergent and the next thing is convergent. So what does it mean? And uh, in fact, well, there's a nice way to say it in the sense that uh, um, this operation, this op operation really extends continuously so that um, this, uh, this operation is unique. That in, in, in the end, you do get something that's uniquely de determined by this symbol. Okay, but I'm not going to go there because I only have 25 minutes for the first lecture. That time really runs fast. Okay, so that's the first uh, step. So at least uh, for a general symbol class, we can define it. After, after some work. And now I want to upgrade the, upgrade the mapping property. So if I, if I have a Schwartz function, I ended up with an L infinity function, that seems a bit too weak. So in fact, we're going to upgrade the mapping property. Mapping property. So proposition, so assume I have a symbol class as usual, A is in SM, R, 2N, Rn, or M is any number. Then what I have is that uh, this op A, this pseudo differential operator, it maps Schwartz function to Schwartz function. It's much better than L infinity. And it also map from temper distribution to temper distribution. Okay. So you'll see that the second line is really, uh, in some sense, follows from the first line. But the first line needs a bit of explanation. And hopefully I'll have a tiny bit of time. Let me uh, just say a bit of idea what's happening here. So the idea in the, in, the previous mapping, in the previous mapping property, I said, how do we get this L infinity? Well, I just, uh, I just need the, the integral to converge. 
right? And well, what do I do now in order to show that this op A, op A acting on fun a Schwartz function will get me a Schwartz function? That means I, if I keep applying this differential and uh, multiplication by x, I should still get L infinity. Okay. So what's happening here is that we have this two very useful um, commutator relation. So let me just write out the, the two commutator relation first. So the first relation is xj composed with op A is equal to op A acting on, well, uh, composed with xj minus op of d psi j A. I'll explain a little bit what this is. And the second relation I have is dxj applying to op A. This is equal to, again, I'm going to flip this D, uh, dxj to the other side. And then I'll get, a, I'll get a commutator, which is plus op of dxja plus dyja. I should keep this board for now. Okay, so the first thing to see is that once we have these two relations, we can show that if you apply this to a Schwartz function, you'll get a Schwartz function. Well, what's happening here is that, well, what I secretly hoping is that we're, we want to have x alpha d x beta up a u. So this is, should still be L infinity for any alpha beta. So, okay, let me just write. so we want this. And if we can show this, then this means that this up a u is in, S infinity, is in Schwartz class. Okay. And well, then I just need to deal with the op this operation here. So, well, let's do it one by one. So if, uh, if I just have x here, so if you apply xj here, and I want to see what's happening on the right-hand side. What's happening on the right-hand side is that uh, xj goes into u, which does nothing because xj times u is still a Schwartz function. And this, up the psi ja, this is a better symbol class. As we recall that uh, if you uh, differentiate in the psi variable, this, uh, decays, uh, this makes a uh, decay one more time. Okay, so this is better in the sense that I also, if you apply to u, you also get L infinity. So that's why if you multiply xj, that's good. And the second, well, second thing is similar, that uh, if you apply dxj here, and then look at what's really happening here, you flip to dxj to the inside, again, dxju is doing nothing because I'm in Schwartz function, so that's still a Schwartz function, so this is L infinity. And this part, well, this part, we know that dxj or dyj applying to the symbol class does nothing. So it's still in the same symbol class, and therefore it's still in L infinity, this whole thing. So by those two commutator relation, we show that uh, this is still in L infinity, and you can just keep applying it. Okay, now, um, I don't think I have time to, uh, to say, to, 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 do, uh, to say too much about the commutator relation, but uh, I want to say that, uh, again, those two relations are, are obtained by using integration by part. So by a careful integration by part, you'll see that you can flip this xj inside, and what you get outside is, uh, what you get as a commutator is this dxj. Okay. You can just check it by, by formula. All right, now um, the third, point of this proof is that uh, once we have the first line, then the second line really follows in the sense that I can extend my relation, uh, my, my op operation of this op A to action on, on a larger class by the following. So I'm going to define, uh, uh, well, okay, let me write, for a temper distribution U and uh, a Schwartz function S, I'm going to define the following. So op A acting on U, which a priori I don't know what this is, and uh, I'm going to pair it with phi in L2, then it's going to be defined as flipping it to the other side, U op A star, the L2 adjoint, acting on phi. All right. So, okay, so I'm just uh, um, transforming my problem into another problem with a new notation. 
Uh, but later we'll see that this of a star, this is a quantization of a different symbol, which I call a star. And this a star is in the same symbol class, SM. All right. And therefore, the right hand side is actually well defined in the sense that, well, so my phi is in a, a short class. So by, my first, uh, by the first line of the, of the theorem, I know that all pay star acting on phi is still a short class. And therefore, it can pair with a temporal distribution to get me a well-defined action. And then, on the other side, if I define by this, then this just means that all pay u defines an, a, in, a, an element in the dual class of this Schwartz function, which is in temporal distribution. So that's my definition. Okay, and everything again. There's this bilinear, uh, this bilinear continuity here. So all the bounds are there. So we can say that of a u is indeed in S prime. Okay, so that's how it's done. All right. Of course, there's a, this mysterious line here, which uh, hopefully will happen in uh, 45 minutes. Yeah. All right. Now, finally, um, let me. So after all the introduction here. Finally, I can formally say what are the pseudo differential operators. Okay, so I'll call quote unquote definition that uh, my pseudo differential operators in this uh, in um, in in this um, Kohn-Nirenberg uh, symbol class are just defined to be all such quantizations where A is in the correct is in the Kohn-Nirenberg symbol class for some M. So in particular. By my definition, I'm going to uh, define this M's order pseudo differential operator. So this is just the, all the op A, where A is M's order. Okay. So again, this A has depends on x, y, psi. And uh, there is one important thing I want to mention here is that is the intersection of all such pseudo differential operators. So that's the smoothing operators I want to introduce. Um, this is a, probably a good word for that. Okay, so this psi minus infinity Rn, this is defined to be the intersection of R psi m, m, okay, so any m. All right, and uh, this is, um, First of all, this is called smoothing operators, which I'll explain in a moment. And uh, in particular, it's really identified to this set of quantizations of those symbols where the symbols just decays infinitely. So that is A R in this so-called S minus infinity, R to N, R N where this is just the, the intersection of all the symbol class. So, and yeah. So, well, one thing I want to mention here is that uh, this relation is not as simple as it looks, because there's a non-uniqueness of representation of the symbol class and the quantization in the sense that the quantization is not an injective action. That uh, for the same pseudo differential operator, you, ha you can have different representations, which we'll see in a moment. And uh, therefore, to, to show that those two things are actually the same, there, it needs a bit of work. But I'm not going to do it here. But, uh, uh, just, uh, just for, but we know that it's going to be identified like that. And in particular, this is say, what this is saying is that uh, the symbols here really decays infinite order. It decays. And therefore, what it does is that it smooths anything. So what it really says is the following. But, uh, what it really says is that uh, um, this for any A in, okay, let me just write, uh, for any A in psi, Negative infinity Rn. This is called smoothing operator in the sense that uh, this Aux can be written as in the integral kernel form kxy uy dy, 
where this KXY, you can say that uh, it's just all kinds of things that are put in there, integrating and including integrating the D cosine. Okay, so they just put everything together. And then what we see here is that this KXY is a C infinity function. Okay, you can check that by hand. Uh, by using this infinite decay, meaning that uh, you can apply dx and dy to this integration kernel as much as you want. And it's still, it's still uh, bounded, so that's why you have this. All right, so what it does is that it says that, well, it smooths the things. Okay, no matter what kind of junk you can put in, you put in there. I mean, not what kind of junk, oh, any kind of junk, but uh, no matter how bad things are, you can get a smooth function out. All right, and I'm, I'm not going to use this, uh, this format too much for my lecture later. Okay. Now, um, the next thing I want to talk about that's very important, which is this, um, as I mentioned before, that uh, this representation of, um, of the, this, uh, this correspondence between symbol and the quantum, this operator is not one-to-one. -one. And uh, it is, but, but there is a convenient form that I will want to use later. So part three, I want to talk about why independent symbols. So in some sense, what I did is that I introduced y, but now I want to convert it to some symbol that doesn't depend on y anymore. And uh, so the, uh, the general, well, one line of what I'm going to do later is that this class of operators, pseudo-differential operators, is really given by the same class of operators where it's this A, it only depends on X and Xi. All right, so let me write out the theorem. Okay, still have time. So this theorem is long, leave some space here. Um, assume A is in the general symbol class, meaning that it can depend on X, Y, and Xi. And then I can convert it to uh, a symbol, so there exists an A tilde, which is in SM, so the same order for sure, uh, but it only depends on X and Xi, such that these two pseudo differential operators are the same. Op A is equal to op zero of A tilde. And this, and moreover, this A tilde is uniquely defined by this A in the sense that uh, there exists an asymptotic expansion symptotic expansion, such that uh, this A tilde x psi can be written as sum of k from zero to infinity, A tilde k. I'll explain uh, in a moment what this tilde means. It's not, a, it's not an equal sign. And where this, all the A k's are have uh, explicit formula, where A tilde k is equal to 1 over k factorial of minus i dy dot d psi to the k applied to a x y psi, and not enough, I should restrict it to the diagonal where y equal to x. Okay. Okay, so that's the statement of the theorem. So, well, first of all, this dy dot d psi just means, again, in the inner product form, that just means dyj d psi j, and, well, sum of dyj d psi j. And you keep applying that, you get this. And, uh, uh, right, so let me say a few words. First of all, <laughs> this is an asymptotic expansion in the sense that uh, it's not in the usual convergence series. So, and this is a very common in this business that uh, the asymptotic expansion, what this means, expansion means that uh, for any integer n, this a tilde x psi minus the first uh, n terms, k from 0 to n minus 1, a k tilde, this is going to be in a better symbol class. And in the correct symbol class, it's going to be s to the n minus n. R N. Okay, I think I got it correct. Yeah. Okay. So what it says is that uh, each time you you add in one term, then this symbol class gets better, gets one order better. 
So in particular, if, uh, if you take out, uh, say, k equal to 1, uh, k equal to 0, then this is n equal to 1. So that means that uh, a tilde minus a0 is going to be s n minus 1. And then if you minus, then take out a1, you'll get s minus 2. Okay. So that's, uh, uh, that's what this azimuthal expansion means. And, uh, um, okay, I think I still have a tiny bit of time. I'm not going to prove this, it's complicated, but I'll give you some idea by proving a simpler proposition, I mean the, first, the simpler part of a simpler proposition, which is the following, that uh, op A can be written as op zero tilde A K, K from zero to over N minus one, plus a remainder term, and this remainder term is in the correct symbol class. Rn is in S n minus n. And uh, I'm going to prove it for uh, n equal to 1. At least, you give you some, at least give you some idea what's happening here, that why we get this kind of asymptote expansion. Thank you. Yeah. OK. So, well, so what's happening here is really the following. That, uh, so if you compare, if you look at the first term of the, this a tilde 0, then you'll see that a x y psi minus a tilde 0 x psi. This a tilde 0 is nothing. It's just the a x x psi. There's no, uh, there's no derivative here because, well, the k is equal to 0. Uh, but it's restricting to the diagonal. So this is equal to a x y psi minus a x x psi. And uh, this is, um, well, I know that this is equal to 0 when x equal to y. OK. And then I'm just going to use this property to write this whole thing as an, to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, I can write it as integration of um, 0 to 1 dt partial t of a x x plus t times y minus x and psi uh, dt. Okay. And moreover, I'm going to, okay, that's, a, that's bad planning. I'm going to use this board here. And uh, then I'm going to apply this derivative inside. So let me just write out the result and uh, omit some of the steps in the middle. Um, this is going to be equal to sum j from 1 to n, yj minus xj times bj xy psi, where bj xy psi, well, that's just a, it's really just chain rule, 0 to 1 dyj applying to a x x x plus t y minus x psi dt. OK. So nice and interesting. It's really just calculus, multivariable calculus. And uh, what's happening here is that uh, I converted to this whole thing, this, this, this difference, to the following form, where this bj is well controlled. This bj is just the taking derivative in the y variable here and then integrating t, t, so that's doing nothing. So in particular, what we see here is that this bj is in the same symbol class because it's y, variable, y derivative. Okay, so, and in particular, and by something that we saw before, I think, uh, right, yeah, well, we did that before, by integration by part, what you see is that uh, this is equal to up d side j b, and that is a good operator. And this is in uh, S M minus 1. Because that's uh, the conversing to the J, because I J thing. All right. So, well, what I'm doing here is to say that uh, if you remove the first leading term here, what you end up is one order better in terms of symbol. So that's my R1. Okay. And the next step is you start dealing with R1 again by removing the, uh, the, 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 the uh, removing the, the diagonal and then keep doing it. Keep doing this kind of operation, then you'll just do it better and better. All right. So that's how we do it. So uh, da, 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 and uh, I should say that for full proof, please see uh, Richard Merrill's notes. All right. And I'm 
claim it, I'm done here. And for the, uh, for I still have one minute, let me introduce the most important notation before everybody disappears. Uh, that is uh, the principal symbol. So all we're doing here is the saying that uh, now this symbol class and, quant and uh, pseudo differential operators has no, has no one to one correspondence. But there are some things that are invariant. And in particular, if A is a equal to of A, it's in SM, sorry, it's in uh, S psi M, meaning that it's, a, it's an M's order pseudo differential operators. Then I can define the following, which is an invariantly defined thing. That is, so sigma m a, it's called the principal symbol of this operator. It's defined to be a x x psi. It's an equivalence class, and it's living in S m r two n r n divided by well quotient of S m minus one r n. Okay, let me say r n. So what I'm doing in, in, in the previous theorem is saying that uh, I can convert it into a un uniquely represented um, symbol that only depends on x. And the leading term is defined without a problem, where the leading term is just right here, this ax, x, xi. Okay. And you can add in lower order terms, and uh, this will result in some, some difference in the sm minus 1. But in terms of leading term, if you quotient out this, it's going to be the same. And this is invariantly defined. And in particular, we know that uh, if, the, um, if for a pseudo differential operator, this M's order principal symbol is equal to 0, this is if and only if A is in the next order, as we can see here from the expansion. That just means that leading order is 0, so that means that op A is equal to op R1, where R1 is better. OK, so in particular, we call this sigma m is the principal symbol of A. And uh, usually from now on, I'm just going to denote it as sigma. So that means that's the order. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seems no opposition for the next uh, one, two, three. OK, I'll take it. <laughs> OK, so this is a principal symbol. symbol. And as you can see, that uh, this whole expansion will tell me that this is well defined. And uh, that's going to be useful later once we talk about elliptic operators. Um, OK, so which is, that's great. That means I can talk about one more thing, which I promised in 45 minutes, but I can do it now. That is, um, that is adjoints, which we used before. Right here, actually. Okay, so um, so the idea of pseudo differential operators and taking symbols and stuff is that uh, on the one side we have those uh, operators which are acting on functions, so like differential operators. So that's a uh, more analysis. On the other hand, we have through quantization we have those symbol classes which are just functions. So one side is anal analysis, and the other side is in some sense algebra that uh, we can convert a lot of its operations on the analysis side. For example, taking adjoints, taking composition to the other side into symbol class operations. So the next uh, big part is I'm going to talk about those algebraic properties. So four is adjoints and compositions of pseudo differential operators. OK. So the first theorem is simple, which I'll finish in the next two minutes, is that uh, if, a operate, if a pseudo differential operator, or if A is a M's order pseudo differential operator, then its adjoints, its L2 adjoints, as I defined above, is also a pseudo differential operator. Moreover, it's quite easy to, um, to compute the principal symbol, so sigma a star is going to be equal to sigma a, taking its uh, taking its complex um, taking taking this, and uh, the proof again is 
just by, um, by the following write-up. So I'm just writing out everything. So up A star applying to Vx is going to be equal to 2 pi to the minus n. So let me write it out and explain a little bit what's happening here. e to the i x minus y dot psi um, a y x psi bar v y dy d psi. Okay, so that's all about it. Okay, so let me explain a little bit what's happening here. So this formula really comes from the uh, this L two uh, this de this definition above. If you write out everything by L two composite uh, by L two inner product, you will see that uh, if you flip it to the other end, well x y flips, and also because I'm taking L two I joints in the complex version, so I have a bar here. Okay, that's all. And in particular, and which is also why you can see that having x y there is useful. Um, in particular, what we have is up a star is equal to up a star, where this a star is x y psi is defined to be a y x psi bar. OK, so that's it. That, uh, well, and it's easy to check that this thing is the same, same symbol class. And the principal symbol also follows from here. OK, so we're done with this uh, uh, adjoint. And you can see that this helps me to prove that uh, it does act on, on the, uh, on the uh, temporary distribution. OK, so I'll stop here, and we'll continue with composition in the next lecture. The, the top, the, the, uh, this pseudo differential operator acts from S prime to S prime. Oh, the smoothing ones. Right. It acts from S prime to S. 